And welcome back to Meeting of the Minds. Today we're here with two special guests, dynamic duo brothers, Steve and Jeff Gluckstein, Olympians, coaches, Mr. Everything's, both of them, all American guys. How's it going? Good. Doing good. Yeah, yeah. not bad. Staying, uh, trying not to go crazy over here with this uh, <laughs> quarantine. It's been some weird times, that's for sure. That, that is for sure. Yeah, so we started, I almost started going a little too early before we recorded, asking you what kind of things are you doing now during this time, uh, yourselves, your athletes? What's been the story? Yeah. So um, as far as for me, I've been coaching a little bit online, some online strength and conditioning classes for my athletes. Um, you know, I know this is kind of a weird time. Like our sport is very... Uh, equipment specific, right? We jump on a seven by 14 foot trampoline. So without that equipment, you can't, there's not really much you can do. You can do some tumbling on the ground, but otherwise we've been really drilling on um, building their strength, building their technique. Um, but again, that's only for maybe like a couple hours a day. So aside from that, I've uh, been tackling some projects that I, I wanted to do for a while. I, I started a trampoline podcast um, which is very specific to the trampoline community. Awesome. Um, and I've been doing some like statistics on the sports, finding out what's the average age of the world champions, world championship medalists, and, you know, kind of doing some stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's been eating up a lot of my time trying to read. I thought I was going to be reading a lot more than I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, what about you, Jeff? Uh, I'm actually just starting school up again. Um, nice. I kind of put it on the back burner just for um, the Rio Olympics and the Tokyo Olympics. I wanted to uh, go to a chiropractic school. Um, so I'm just knocking out some classes for that. And um, yeah, just taking this time to really focus on myself and um, just, yeah. That's... What uh, What classes are you taking? Uh, right now, I'm taking biomechanics. Nice. Bi biomechanics? Oh, uh, no. no bi biology and, and chemistry. Chem oh, bi <laughs> bio and chem. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's rough. How's that going? <laughs> <laughs> I just started, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> You're a machine. God bless you. <laughs> Better you than me. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. No, that's, mm -hmm. that's great. That's great stuff. And, and, and there it is, again, back to the, um, that overarching principle of operating at a high level, whether it's sports, whether it's academics, um, your relationships, your personal lives. That's great stuff. You know, meeting those challenges head on. So tell me a little bit, what are some of the philosophies that you have as athletes and that now you pass on as coaches? Um, any principles you have over at ETA? Mm -hmm. Anything like that? Um, I think, I think, well, one of the, the founding things that ETA was built on and, and our head coach and owner is Tatiana. She's a world champion from Russia and she grew up in the Soviet era. And so one of the things that she's kind of carried on to us and that we carry on, um, to our athletes is, is discipline. Right. And, um, it, you're not going to be motivated every day. Every day is not going to be fun. Right. In fact, in fact, if you're if you're training five, six days a week, you know, even if you love it, it's going to turn into a job. Right. And and what's going to carry you over on those days that that, you know, you don't want to do it is discipline. Um, for me, I my philosophy that I coach in is is I teach to become a champion and the champion isn't someone that wins first place. However, if you do the things I'm about to say, you, you might end up in first place, right? And so the champion is built on many philosophies. The champion is someone that does the dishes without being told to do the dishes. The champion is someone that says, uh, looks the teacher in the eye and says, good morning, you know, in school when, when instead of just walking by to their desk, you know, someone that's courteous to others, has respect for others, um, you know, someone that tries to do their homework the best, right? They finish their homework the best out of the whole class and, you know, not someone just trying to scribble and get it, get it over with. So, you know, a champion is, is more so making a good person and a moral person before making a good athlete. So, um, and I know I, I 
have been coaching since 2005 and I retired from competing in 2016. Um, so I do a lot more of the coaching than my brother, but maybe, maybe you can answer what kind of philosophies do you thrive on as an athlete? Like what keeps you going? Um, I mean, I, I kind of take it one day at a time. Um, but I, I do like to set goals for myself. Um, I think if you don't have a goal, then you're kind of lost. Um, so I, I like to write down my goals every day just to remind myself where I'm going and uh, how I'm moving forward and kind of you can backtrack and, and look to see how far you've come. So that's, um, I think that's, that's for me, that's what works the best. That's, that's big. So, so life becomes intentional and, and you're not just moseying along and, and just kind of going with the flow. Of course, there's always an element of going with the flow. We all have to do that now, but it's, it's a very mindful and intentional, I know where I'm going. And I like also how you said about being able to look back because when we're in the grind all the time, sometimes we don't think about the, the success we've developed. Like you said, Steve, the, the virtue that's developed over time. So it's, it really is important to be able to celebrate even those small successes. That's big. Yeah. And we, uh, one thing that our sport um, does that's, that's really great and fantastic is this is, is not only like specific uh, goals, but in our sport, we journal and track how many returns you've done, how many routines you've done every single day, you have every single turn, you get on the equipment, you get off the equipment, you write down exactly what you did. We also time how high you jump, right? So you track that. So you can literally go back and see through your journal on this exact day, one year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, what was your degree of difficulty? How hard is the routine you, you were doing? You know, how high were you jumping? And you can see for yourself exactly how far you've come in the sport, not just with goals, like I want to win this competition or do that. So I think that's something that's pretty specific to our sport. I haven't found any other sport that necessarily tracks every single thing they do. Um, I know, uh, probably the closest thing is like weightlifting where they track all of their weights and stuff like that. Um, but I think that's one of the things that's really great, um, uh, that our sport has the, uh, the, po the possibility of doing. Yeah, that's, that's big. You're right. If you're, and if you're not assessing, you're guessing, <laughs> yeah. right? So yeah, absolutely. Changing gears a little bit, thinking about as, as brothers always competing together, um, you know, from youth right through the Olympics. What's it like? How do you, well, first of all, just how has that helped motivate one another? We'll start, start easy with that, the, the broad motivating one another, and then moving on to more of like the, the mindset struggles in terms of always being compared. That's how I was with me and my brothers. And there's that, there's that rivalry, but there's also helping each other along the way. And then also competing probably back to back all the time. How do you stay in your own head and not get caught up? Cause you love your brother. You want to see them do well. You know, it's their dream too, but, but not getting too emotionally wrapped up into it where you don't burn yourself out. So I guess just, I'd love to hear from each of you on this, but yeah, start off very basic, just what it was like growing up and how you fueled one another motivation and mental toughness wise. Do you want to start or you want me to start? Uh, I'll, I can, I can. Okay take it first um so I, i've always looked up to to steven uh growing up um i started off in artistic gymnastics and um for about a year but I, I i noticed how quick he was um gaining his skills like yeah. learning doubles and multiple twists so um I, what i took from that is um i i I wanted to do the same thing because I, I love trampoline. I, I never really had a fond interest in the rings and um, the floor. Um, so he, he kind of like paved the path a little bit. Um, he, he had to go through probably some falls um, to learn his skills. And um, whereas I, I could just look up to him as like a mentor and, uh, he he kind of guided me through through that way. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think growing up, we we went through a lot of different phases where I think you know brothers do you know depending on their age, right? So like 
we went through a phase where, you know, I'm about, I'm just about three years older than him. And so, you know, the difference between nine and 12 is huge. Right. Right. But then the difference between 15 and 18 might not be, or the difference between 21 and 24 might not be that much. So, you know, when we were younger, it wasn't really, he was, he was much younger and, and, and learning that it wasn't competitive. It was almost, we were in different groups. It was almost like we both just enjoyed doing the same sport. Um, and then as we got into our teenage years, um, you know, he, he was doing really well and I was really excited for him. And, and, um, and then as we, he started catching up to me, right. We started the butt heads a little bit and we kind of went through a tough phase and then, uh, and then it, I, we, and then everything was fine. And then we went through another phase where it's, it's, um, you know, where we, we were pretty competitive and we, we kind of knew that only one person could go to the Olympics and, and it was, it was tough on us, you know? And I think, and I think it was really tough for me to watch everything come so easily to him as it did. Um, you know, and, and I think that was, was, took a toll on our relationship as well, that I kind of had this frustration that he was getting everything so, so easily. And it took me that much harder to, to, to do it. Um, and then once we got to both like the senior elite level, you know, we kind of fed off of each other. And then when we were outside of the gym, it was no more gym, you know, and we look kind of, as we got older, we learned how to separate that from, from our lives. Um, but I think as far as competition goes, our sport is, how do you put it? it it's not as, not as competitive as combat sports, right? Where you're going one-on-one with someone else or even, you know, basketball where there's offense and defense. There's no really defense. You really, in our sport, you're trying to compete against your previous best and your personal best. So you know, if, if that landed you in first place, it landed you in first place. If that, if, you know, if you had a personal best and you landed in third place, I think, you know, yeah, okay. It hurts a little bit, but you're a lot, you're pretty content with, with, you know, reaching that personal best. So when we were competing, we, you know, we were just hoping that he would hit his personal best and I would hit my personal best and we'll see where those scores lay out. Yeah, that makes sense. And how is it sometimes? Cause I know, when I would, my brother, so I have a younger brother, Jeff, also, who is, again, about his that same split. Jeff. Yeah, his name is Jeff. <laughs> so, so it's, it's me, and then my brother, Jeff, who's two and a half years younger, and then Greg, four years younger, which than him. So that was a big split. But me and Jeff were always together. So there was a lot of mental dynamics going on where he was another one who was very talented. We both always were in practices together. And a lot of times he would win or he would do well. And then I'd think, well, you know, my younger brother did well. Now I got it. Now I got to do well, which is totally not related to me at all. When you think about it, that would be one of the dynamics. And then another dynamic was when he would be out there wrestling, I would be coaching him and getting worked up and almost like wrestling a match before I wrestled a match. And I had to learn how to detach a little bit where, okay, he's doing his thing. I got to get mm-hmm. myself in my optimal mental state. So any, any of that, I mean, again, they're different dynamics for the older and younger brother and no one's saying one has it easier or harder because it's different right. dynamics. Yeah. I, and I think, I think, he, I think, uh, me, I had a fair amount of success as a, a youth athlete, you know, anywhere from 15 years old, I started winning international competitions and I was making the national team since 14 years old. And so I think it might have probably been a little bit more difficult for him, you know, because now I have, I'm starting to build this name for us internationally. And then they're like, oh, there's another one. Oh, is he good? You know, and so it, it kind of puts a little bit of stress. Um, did you, I mean, did you ever feel that, that stress from, um, I mean, that you were like expected to do well because um, you were, because we were brothers? Uh, a little bit. Um, I think, uh, trying to detach, um, from being brothers in competition was right. kind of healthy. Right. Um, but I mean, you, you can try to detach, but you, I don't know. There's always like that little piece in the back of your mind of that, um, that'll kind of like weigh on you. Um, 
So, yeah, it did a little bit. Were there times where you'd have to, would you watch each other compete? Like, would you, would you watch the other one's routine or would you have to sometimes, was it better sometimes to not watch and just, okay, he does his thing. I'm going to get myself ready and then we'll see how he did after. Depends on the day and the competition. Really. Yeah. Some, um, and, and it depends on who goes first or who goes last, you know? Yeah. So I think I was more inclined to watch if I had already competed. If you, you already know? competed, but would you, if yeah. you didn't? If I didn't, um, sometimes depends on the, the, the nature of the competition, you know, sometimes if it was like a, a major competition, like national championships, I don't think I would watch only cause it would, it would, you know, work m me up and I'd lose a lot of, uh, nervous energy just watching him. So, but if it was something a little smaller, regional championships, state championships, you know, something like that, or even like a, a national team camp, I think I would watch him. I think, um, internationally, I would always watch. Um, just domestically, I think was um, a bit different. Yeah. So you would you would watch. Yeah. 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 It's it's tough because it's it's one of those things. And I always think about this. Obviously, being a wrestler, it's it's a little bit different. But when I I have so much respect for sports that you guys have this routine, you've practiced it thousands of times, and now it's like just do this. And you've done it perfectly before. For me, that would just drive me crazy. And that's why I have, yeah. uh, again, so much respect. Like I said, gymnastics, trampoline, um, diving, any of these routes where there's just a figure skating, there's set routines. Right. You've done it before, and now go out there and do it. And this is the biggest competition of your life. Like, <laughs> I'd rather yeah. the unknown. I'd rather the unknown. <laughs> right. I, I guess there's pros and cons to each, you know. Of course. No, I just, again, tr tremendous respect there. But yeah, I always think about those dynamics and should the athlete, like would you recommend your athletes as coaches now watch the teammates knowing what you know and, and having gone through it, would you recommend that or, or not? Because you want to support I think, them, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it depends on the personality, you know. So, um, you know, if there's an athlete that I know that has a hard time you know, keeping that level of, of their emotions, whether that's nervousness, excitement, if they, if I, if I know they have a hard time keeping that balance, then I would, you know, say, listen, tell them good luck, give them a hug or a high five, you know, before they go out and then, you know, go put in your headphones and go on your own and get in your zone and, and, and what you need to do. Um, but otherwise I would say probably 90% of the time I have them watching each other, cheering for each other. And I think that, um, also creates this dynamic where they're not alone, right? And they don't feel like they're that one person doing that one routine out there that they, you know, they, they have a, even though it's an individualized sport, it creates this team dynamic that they have someone, something and someone to fall back on, some kind of support behind them. So um, I, I really try to push them to, to watch and cheer for each other. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, just for me personally, um, I'm a little bit different. Um, I, when I'm on the trampoline competing, I don't like to hear other people cheering for me as I'm about to start. Um, just cause I, I kind of analyze whose voice I'm hearing. You're like, come on, good luck. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. Stephanie. You're like, Oh, like, good job. Like, let's go. Like, so I kind of lose my train of thought that way. Um, yep. but once the routine is over, then I want everybody to, to cheer as loud as I can. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it is, it is tough because a lot of those different voices we hear in our head and, you know, just everyone's different. How do you get to know your athletes and maybe how did your coaches get to know you in terms of giving you guys what you need when you need it? I think that's just something you learn over time right so a lot of my athletes I'm seeing them 18 plus hours a week you know and that's just something that you learn from you know when you push them when you don't push them you know how are they reacting how do they react to you know conflict with their peers and teammates and and you know just over time and over experiences you get to learn their characters and and, and what you know helps them what hurts them what feeds them what motivates them and um, I don't know if there's a set equation for it, but it, you know, it's like you, it's like building any relationship, you know, you, you get to, to know each other and, and um, you know, it's kind of like 
in a relationship when you guys are, are ready to move in with each other, right? And then you learn the most and that's like, that's the competitions, right? So once you right. start taking your athletes to national and international competitions, that's like the moving in together. Then you really learn what they're about because they can be one person in the gym and they can get to a competition and be a totally different person. Um, right. And so, yeah, so basically I, uh, in a nutshell, it's just experience with, with that person. Yeah, that makes sense. And how do you guys prepare mentally and physically for the, the, the biggest competitions of your lives, biggest events? Um, I think there's quite a few components that go into it. Um, one of them is obviously physical. Um, it's not only what you do in the gym that matters. I think, oh, I sh can't stress this enough, it's what you do out of the gym as well is just as important. Um, so if that's like Pilates, CrossFit, um, anything, yoga, um, is a, a great additional, um, uh, substitution for, uh, yeah. getting that extra, that extra work in. Um, and also, um, just the mental, mental aspect is meditating. Are you journaling? Are you writing down your goals? Um, so just stay, staying motivated that way and not losing sight of what you want is, uh, quite important. Yeah. And then, and then now fast forward, now you're in the world championships. What are you telling yourself there? <laughs> um, just focus on your, your training beforehand, um, and just trust, trusting the process, trusting yourself, trusting your coach, um, and knowing that you belong there. And um, it's it's a show, so you, you gear up this this whole entire year to to put it on. So why hold back? That's right. Yeah. So some of the things that helped me in, in preparation, um, at least leading up to like the world championships or at the world championships, is is number one is is going back and looking at the journal and seeing how many routines I've done, how many times I've done it, right? And and that kind of right helps build my confidence saying, okay, I can do this. I've done it 300 times over the past four weeks, right? right. I know how to do this. Um, the second thing is uh, I create a mental flow chart. So basically what that is, is I walk myself through the routine and I, with each skill, I'll pick three things uh, in chronological order and it'll have keywords, right? So it'll be one to three words. And, um, if I do those three things, that skill will be perfect. And I'll play it in my mind and I'll say those three things. So for example, if my first skill is a triple front pike with a half twist at the end, I'll say chest up, which is helping me take off. I might say pull tight. So getting into my position and I might say big open. So big openings, right? So chest up, pull tight, big open. That'll be my three. Then I go to my next skill, right? And I'll have this mental flow chart for my whole entire routine. I'll have these, these keywords absolutely memorized and I'll go into, and I'll just replay and replay in slow motion at making my routine absolutely perfect. And then when I, you know, if, and when I get into trouble or if I'm on the trampoline competing and, my, and I, I get a little distracted, I just come back to those keywords and boom, it sets me right back to what do I have to do to make this absolutely perfect, right? And I've done it 300 times in person, and I've done it 5,000 times in my mind, right? Those keywords are just ready to go. Um, and, uh, and one other thing that kind of helped me, at least with my nerves, is uh, a, good, a good statement that I told myself was, you don't have to do this, yes. right? And I would tell that to myself over and over again. I said, you don't have to go out there. You don't have to compete. You really don't. And then I'd keep saying that to myself again and again and again and again until my mind said, you, you know what? No, I, I want to go out there. Right. I want to compete, right? And so it would kind of switch my brain from like a defense to like an offense, right? And that, that, that offense led, you know, built or gave me confidence. And then I would go out there and say, no, I want to do this. I want to do well. And, you know, I wouldn't be jumping on the trampoline defensive, you know, uh, but rather with confidence. Yeah, you guys just get loaded with information there. How do, how do I unpack that? Okay, well, what Jeff, what Jeff said right there about trusting, right? That's a big thing. And a lot of athletes, a lot of people don't realize if you look at the Latin roots of trust, of confidence, confidere means to trust. So how do you build confidence? You trust. Like you said, trusting your training, trusting your coaches. Um, 
as you said, Steve, they're like logging it. Actually, the, the competence builds the confidence and the confidence builds the competence. The causative arrow works in both directions, right? So that's, that's a big thing. And then that, those, that mental flow chart, was that something you came up with on your own? Because I, what I love about it is that's you're pairing together the physical and the mental. And, and like you said, you nailed it, the, the cues, just having a short word or phrase. You don't want it to be a long, drawn-out dialogue, but just right. simple, cue you quick, and bring you back to where you need to be. Was that something that you learned from people, or how did that come no, about? No, you know, it, it's, I, it's something that I've always done, and, and um, you know, that's, that's, how, that's how you learn. And I, I think maybe with, with wrestling, it, there's maybe some footwork you have to memorize, right? And it might be equivalent to that, you know, right, left, right, sure. or, or something like, or, or sure. boxing, right? Jab, jab, hook, something like that. And so basically I found myself when I got off the trampoline, kind of just saying, reach pike heels, reach pike heels, reach pike heels and memorizing. I was like, okay, if I remember those three things, I'm going to do that skill perfect next time. And a lot of those cues would come from coach, my coach. He'd be like, I want you to open earlier. So I said, okay, so now I have to remember to open earlier, right? And it was just kind of like this memorization. And as I got older, that I would start to like write it down. And then as I got even older, it just kind of like progressed. And then I'd start like visualizing using those. And then, um, so I mean, I don't know if it's something that's been taught. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, so I'm not sure. I don't, not that I know of. <laughs> yeah, because those are kind of lessons that we've, we, we, we intentionally weave into our mindset program, but how do we get it? Okay, you look at what highly successful people like the two of you guys have done before, maybe naturally, and then say, okay, well now how do we build this in to make people do this on a regular basis? So it's, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you just copy what other successful people have done. So that's great. And then, and then now how about once you get there, you're in the Olympics, of course, there's like you guys both be world championships, Olympics. It's the biggest stage possible. And there's a lot of fanfare going on, right? There's a lot of hoopla. There's a lot of media, what we call the fan mentality. It's easy to get sucked into that as opposed to keep and And of course you do want to enjoy it, but at the same time, I'm here on a mission. I don't want to get caught up too much in that other stuff. How do, how do I keep myself ready in these big competitions, world Olympic championship? I mean, I don't, I think, um, our sport being small, I don't think that's necessarily a too big of an issue is like with, with the media. I know leading up to the London Olympic games, we had a lot of media to every week, to the gym, to the house. Um, and it got a little bit tiresome, you know, at first. And especially when it's like, okay, come an hour before training, you know, and then they'd, and then they'd want to stay for training. And then, you know, it just, it, it kind of started to to interfere with training a little bit, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's going to come off as arrogant, but you know, your our whole lives, we've been dealt with distractions, you know, and it's once you get to that level, you've kind of learned to, to put on your blinders and, and focus on what's important. Um, you know, and I don't know if you get to that level because you can do that or you get to that level or, or vice versa, right? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just something maybe that we've acquired being exposed to over our whole careers um, or it's something that we naturally have. I don't know. What do you think? What's your answer to the, that question? Um, I think you nailed it pretty much on, yeah. on the head. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, I guess then if if you're looking at you have a youth athlete who starts getting a lot of attention, what practical tips do you give them? What what maybe gotcha. mindset do they approach? Do they take to approach the media? And what you know, first time at a World Championships, first times at a Pan Am, a World Cup, um, there's going to be a lot going on. Um, at very yeah. least, even mentally, even if it's not the people, just mentally, you know, you're at this international competition. So what do you what do you tell the kid? Enjoy it, honestly, and, and enjoy it. And, and as long, because once it's, once you're, once you're in training, once you're on the floor, right, then it's a game time, all, all blinders on, and you're not going to be in that spotlight forever. And I feel like that kind of, at least for me, that gave me a lot of confidence, like, wow, people care, people want to see me, you know, and, and I fed off that. And if I see an athlete that's, um, that it's hurting, you know, harming, 
um, then I would definitely, you know, try to help manage their time, limiting how much they're, they're talking to other people, talking to fans. Um, and then maybe over time, just exposing them maybe a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. But at first, definitely trying to, to limit that, that time frame that they're dealing with fans, media, stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, but honestly, it's, it's something, I think it's a skill that they're going to have to, to, to learn to deal with on their own because I guess like everyone's different. I fed off of it. You know, I'm, Jeffrey might not feed off of it, you know, and, and, and some people might just need to get used to it you know, and, 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 and that's something that's just gained through experience. Yeah. What are, what are your thoughts? I don't see me and my brother. It's like two totally different personalities. I'm an extreme extrovert. He's much more introverted. So the two are going to be different, right? What, yeah. what might, and yeah. So, okay, go ahead. What, what are your thoughts, Jeff? Um, yeah. I mean, Steve and I were, were a bit different. Um, like you said, like he's, I, believe is a little bit more extroverted I'm a little bit more introverted um I think that how did you yeah. how did you handle the media yeah did you did you enjoy it and like the publicity? it was it, it got a little bit too much in the beginning um I I, I liked it and afterwards I, knowing trampoline is such a small sport and community and it's still uprising um i mean uh domestically in just in the u.s it's it's not quite as big as it is over in asia and europe so there's a little bit of a pressure trying to build the sport right. through right. Right. um just different interviews so at, at one end like you you want to focus on you but on the other end you also want to do what's right for the sport and, and building it. So um, I think it's just yep. picking your sacrifices and, um, and just yeah. kind of running with that. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Well, like, like, like you said, it's just different dynamics for different sports. And, and you can't say which one is easier or harder because when you have a baseball, you have a Babe Ruth. You have a, a you know a basketball. There's Michael Jordan. And maybe you say the trampoline. Who is gonna you know who's the American legend? Like that could that could be me. There is you know yeah. that could, that, mm -hmm. that whole thing. So that is a whole nother dynamic. That's 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 at play there. Also, again, no matter how big or small the sport is, once you get at the international scene, you're dealing with people who are just unbelievable talent yep. and work ethic. That I don't care what I don't care what sport it is. I don't care what activity it, it is. You're, you know that you're operating at the high level. So there's going to be that pressure with that, regardless if there, how many people are in the stands. Yep. You know, in the, in the arena. So, no, great, great stuff. Excellent. Any other, what would you say, any maybe mental struggles you see some of your athletes go through and what kind of tips would you, would you help them through that? What is maybe some of the most common mental struggles? Um, well, number one is, is self, that we get is self-doubt. Um, you know, not believing you're good enough or, or thinking that you've lost your skills or that, you know, and I think probably in, in our gym, since we have so many successful youth athletes, right, that someone else is better than me. There's always, some, you know, this person's progressing or this person's passing me, um, you know, and, and, and my, my recommendation is, is you know, stay on course. It's your journey. It's, it's no one else's, you know, and, and learn to enjoy your journey. And I think one of the things that helps is when you look back at your journey and you look back one year, two years ago in your journal and you see how far you've come, you know, and, and everyone's going to hit their, their growth spurts at different times, right? Just like, just like their, their body, you know, they're going to hit growth spurts and grow six inches in a year. Maybe, you know, Tim, you might not grow the same year as John, right? And, and so everyone kind of has that journey and, and it's tough to teach that to a 12 year old, you know? Um, but I think going back in the journal kind of helps them see where and see where their journey is going. For me, I think it's more, what I see is just like the fear, fear of failure. Um, the, the kids, when they come in, they want to please the coach and they want to do it for themselves as well. Um, I, I think it's more of comparing themselves to others 
And um, I think it's just relying on who you are um, yeah. to, to get you where you need to go. Right. A big focus on, yeah, other people comparing to other people. What are other people thinking about me that um, I don't want to make, make mistakes, be a letdown, be embarrassed, let myself down, let the coaches, parents, because it is, it's, it's an investment of time, of money, of energy. So it's, Massive. yeah, tremendous, tremendous amount, the, the sacrifices. But like you, like you guys both said, you, you know, having, having a passion for the sport, loving it, and using it to build the life skills, it's just big, just big. Also, with anything that we spoke about, any time that maybe we worked with the team, were there any one or two pointers that you liked, things that you thought that were pretty good, good piece of information that you liked? Um, I mean, I, I tried to reach into the – I didn't really um, sit with the athletes. and I wanted them to kind of be in there and be time. unbiased. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I didn't want them with me breathing down their neck. You know, I would, I would have loved to sit in there and, and take them the course – um with them but um i mean i and i don't know if this is your go-to but the thing that stuck out with me is is the 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 prey predator right and and that kind of switching that gear kind of like i said before with the offense and defense right you go from scared to offense and um you know eyes on the side like to hide right eyes on the front like to hunt and that, right. you know, that stuck with me. And, and, and that's something that I re reiterate to the kids as well. Um, you know, because whether it's, you know, fear of failure or, you know, feeling not, you know, not confident or so having self doubt, right. That, that switching gears into confidence um, really helps them, them shine. Um, and honestly help them find who they are, you know, because without exposing yourself, you don't really learn about yourself either. If you're just, you know, keeping to yourself all the time. Right. Yeah. And I like, and I like how you guys also said about, you know, you get to do this. You don't have to yeah. do it. And we'll tell our athletes that a lot when they're feeling all the stress, like, listen, you don't, you don't have to do it. You could quit the sport. You don't need this. This is not a requirement right. of life that you compete in the sport. So it just that mental shift. Then they say, that's right. I, I do like this. I do want to do it. So that's, that's important guys. Awesome stuff. So where could people find more information of you guys ETA, like you said, your podcast. Let's let's yep. shout all of that out now. So um, they can follow me on or reach out to me on Instagram. My handle is at Steve Glucks, S T E V E G L U C K S. Um, you can friend me or message me on Facebook, Steve Gluckstein. Um, I just started a few weeks ago a trampoline podcast. Nice. Uh, it's called Trampoline Insight. We uh, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can look us up and. Um, a lot of it is uh, very particular to the sport and statistics of the sport, but there are a few episodes that we talk about uh, mindsets and challenges and the mental health of the athlete. Um, so anyone can really go check out those episodes and, and learn something from that. Um, yeah. And you? I'm pretty easy. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Um, all the handles are the same. It's just at, Jeff Gluckstein. Gluckstein is G L U C K S T E I N. Excellent. And and, and website. Then, uh, yeah, good. Yeah. So we ha our our gym is Elite Trampoline Academy. It's elitetrampolineacademy.com. Or you can um, follow us on Instagram at Elite Trampoline to see some fantastic videos of of little ten year olds doing doubles and triple flips and just just killing it. Stuff you would never think you know, a little kid could do. So it's a, it's a pretty fun, um, it's a pretty fun page to watch. Absolutely. I could attest to that, that this, the, the stuff you're, you guys are putting out, it's great. It's excellent. We're going to put then, a lot of those in the show notes underneath when we get this up on cool. YouTube. Awesome. awesome. And, yeah, actually, absolutely. and we got to give a shout out to your, to your nephews that come in <laughs> to, uh, to my Monday boys class. Yeah. Lit, absolute beasts they're awesome man i i miss working with them well since the awesome. the pandemic the gym you know the gym unfortunately has been closed temporarily but they're they're great kids to work at it's got to be something in your blood man because those kids are are phenoms absolutely the fisk the fisco brothers got another br a brother thing going on in fact the youngest one jackson it's his birthday today he's my godson but gavin dylan and oh, jackson nice. so i'll yes. tell him you guys said happy birthday jackson yeah please do absolutely Guys, great stuff. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. 
You're welcome. Thanks for having us, Gene. All right.